What if I told you the dinosaurs didn't just die? They were erased in minutes by an explosion so powerful it nearly cracked the planet open. We've uncovered the minute-by-minute -minute truth of what really happened the day the world ended and what we've just discovered about the origin of that asteroid might change everything we thought we knew about space and our future. Because the real question isn't how the dinosaurs died, it's when it could happen again. For decades, the story seemed simple. An asteroid hit Earth, the dinosaurs died, and life eventually went on. But now, thanks to groundbreaking research, high-resolution imaging, and buried geological records deep beneath the Gulf of Mexico, we know the truth is far more terrifying and far more fascinating. Scientists have reconstructed a minute-by-minute -minute timeline of the day that changed everything. The moment when Earth went from lush, thriving, to burning, shaking, and drowning in chaos. This wasn't just an impact. It was the beginning of a chain reaction that blackened the skies, boiled the oceans, and nearly erased life itself from the planet. And the most chilling part? That asteroid didn't come from nowhere. Its origins may hold the key to a much bigger threat, one that still lingers out there. It started as a mystery buried beneath layers of time. For years we knew something had struck Earth 66 million years ago. A crater, a global extinction, fossils that just stopped appearing. But what if I told you we now know not just what happened, but how it unfolded minute by minute? Thanks to some of the most advanced scientific tools on the planet, high-resolution photography, 3D tomography, magnetic scans, and sediment analysis, researchers have unlocked a prehistoric time capsule hidden deep beneath the Gulf of Mexico. There lies Chicxulub, a crater over 180 kilometers wide created by an object so massive it could have carved a hole straight through history. Core samples from this site, drilled more than a kilometer into Earth's crust, revealed an unbroken layer of destruction. A snapshot of the very first day of the Cenozoic Era, the Age of Mammals. But it didn't begin with a sunrise, it began with an impact. One that shook the entire planet. This isn't ancient mythology, this is physics, geology, and chemistry, all converging on one apocalyptic event. But science didn't just stop at the crater. They've pieced together a timeline, from the first glow in the sky to the moment fire met water and life was forever changed. And what they found is unlike anything we've ever experienced. Because before the shockwave, before the fire, there was something else, a light, barely moving in the sky, growing brighter every second. Now, close your eyes for a moment. You're not in the 21st century anymore. You're standing in what we now call North America, lush, humid, teeming with life. Towering ferns stretch overhead. Giant dragonflies buzz past your ears. And in the distance, herds of hadrosaurs move slowly beneath a fading orange sky. It's peaceful, calm, but something feels off. As night falls, you notice a strange point of light hanging low in the sky. At first, it looks like a star. Bright, yes, but still. Then, it grows. Not fast, not like a shooting star. This thing doesn't streak. It looms. Hour by hour, brighter, larger, still eerily silent. Dinosaurs raise their heads in confusion. The forest quiets. You feel it in your chest, a pressure, a silence before the scream. And then, the stars disappear. A blinding flash lights the horizon, followed by a sound so loud it can't be heard, only felt. Your bones shake. Birds launch into the sky in panic. The air compresses, burns, ignites. But this isn't the blast, not yet. That comes next. 
because the object that's now entering Earth's atmosphere is the size of a mountain, and it's falling at over 70,000 kilometers per hour. And what happens when it hits will rewrite the surface of the planet. Three seconds. That's all it takes for the asteroid to slice through Earth's atmosphere. Not slow, not graceful. It rips through 60 miles of air like a boulder dropped into a puddle. At 72,000 kilometers per hour, the atmosphere offers no resistance. Then, contact. It strikes the shallow sea where the Yucatan Peninsula sits today. In that instant, ocean water flashes into steam. A plume of superheated vapor erupts skyward. The ground liquefies. The pressure is so immense, the Earth's crust behaves like a fluid. Imagine dropping a stone into a still lake. The first splash spreads outward, then a second splash rebounds upward. That's what the Earth just did. The asteroid bores a crater over 30 kilometers deep, nearly touching the mantle. Then the crust rebounds in a vertical explosion, forming a towering spike of molten rock, a peak ring taller than Mount Everest, which collapses almost immediately in a cascade of debris. This all happens in under 10 minutes. The energy released? Roughly 1 billion Hiroshima bombs, enough to momentarily outshine the sun, enough to heat the air around it to 10,000 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surface of our star. And from that heat, a fireball forms, a globe of vaporized rock, glowing plasma, and compressed air expands outward in all directions. A blast wave races across the continent at over 1,600 kilometers per hour. Trees are flattened, animals vaporized. If you were anywhere within a thousand kilometers, you didn't survive. If this asteroid hit the same place today, you'd be vaporized in Texas, deafened in New York, and have your windows battered in Buenos Aires. But the deadliest part isn't the impact itself. It's what follows, because the shockwave doesn't stop at the coastline. It doesn't stop at the equator. It keeps going around the world, and it starts to tear the Earth apart from the inside. The impact was only the first punch. The Earth hadn't even begun to scream yet. As the shockwave rippled outward, it didn't just flatten forests. It rang the entire planet like a bell. Seismic waves tore through the crust at four kilometers per second. Within minutes, they triggered massive earthquakes across continents. Fault lines slipped, mountains shook, and volcanoes, silent for centuries, erupted without warning. But the real devastation came from the oceans. The impact created tsunamis so massive, they didn't roll, they crushed. Waves hundreds of meters high exploded outward from the Gulf of Mexico. The first of them hit what is now the southern U.S. within an hour, flooding everything in their path for hundreds of kilometers inland. They surged up rivers, reversing their flow like a biblical reversal, and they didn't stop. Six hours later, waves slammed into Europe, Africa, and the coast of Asia. Within 15 hours, Every shoreline on the planet had been touched by the sea. Above Earth, debris was still rising, launched into space by the force of the impact. Millions of tons of pulverized rock, dust, and molten glass rained back down. These weren't pebbles. Some were the size of buses, others as small as marbles. But they all came in fast and on fire. This deadly hailstorm, called tektites, pelted the Earth at hundreds of kilometers per hour. But you didn't need to be hit to die. Because as they re-entered the atmosphere, they superheated the air, igniting global wildfires. The sky turned orange, then red, then black. Forests burned across every continent. Even animals on the other side of the planet, who survived the shockwave, now faced a sky that cooked them alive. And still, this was only the middle of the disaster. 
because the fires would fade, the tsunamis would retreat. But what came next would last for years. The fire was only the beginning. As the last flames died and the rain of molten glass subsided, Earth was left scorched and silent. But above the blackened forest and flooded coastlines, a second catastrophe was already forming. When the asteroid struck, it didn't just launch debris. It vaporized billions of tons of sulfur, carbon, and seawater. These gases rose into the stratosphere where they formed a thick black veil around the entire planet. Sunlight vanished. For months, maybe years, only 10% of the sun's rays reached Earth's surface. Photosynthesis stopped. Plants died, herbivores starved, and predators followed. But it wasn't just the darkness, it was the cold. With no sunlight, Temperatures dropped by nearly 50 degrees Celsius in some regions. Rainfall nearly stopped, dropping by 80%. Deserts spread across the globe. Oceans cooled. Currents shifted. Entire ecosystems collapsed. This wasn't just an extinction. It was a shutdown of the planet. The only places that stayed warm? A few tropical islands, Madagascar, India, parts of Indonesia, barely clung to life. And only the creatures that could burrow, hide underwater, or go dormant survived. Small mammals, crocodiles, turtles, the rest disappeared. Over 75% of all life on Earth gone, all because of a single object from space. But where did it come from? It didn't come from nowhere. For decades, scientists believed the killer asteroid came from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. But recent models suggest a far more chilling origin. The Oort Cloud, a vast frozen halo of comets and debris that surrounds our solar system. So distant, it's almost mythical. This icy graveyard, stretched trillions of kilometers into space, is home to ancient relics from the birth of the Sun and one of them was dislodged. Somewhere out there, something, perhaps a gravitational nudge from Jupiter, knocked a massive comet off its orbit. It spiraled inward, passing too close to the sun and fractured into pieces. One of those fragments, now superheated and accelerated, was flung directly toward Earth. And it hit us, dead center. According to a Harvard study by Avi Loeb and Amir Siraj, this may not be a rare occurrence. In fact, Earth could be vulnerable to similar impacts every 250 to 700 million years. That means what happened 66 million years ago wasn't a fluke, it was part of a cosmic pattern. And the clock, whether we like it or not, is still ticking. So what does this mean for us today? The age of dinosaurs ended with a single, unstoppable impact. But what about us? Earth still drifts through a cosmic shooting gallery, and even today, some objects come dangerously close. On December 11, 2021, an asteroid called 4660 Nerus, about the size of the Eiffel Tower, passed just 3.8 million kilometers from Earth. That sounds far until you realize it's a near miss in cosmic terms. And it's not done with us yet. On Valentine's Day 2060, Nerus is projected to pass just 1.1 million kilometers away. That's closer than the Moon. One small change in its orbit, a nudge, a gravitational pull, and the story could be very different. And let's not forget what happened in 2013. A rock just 20 meters wide exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia. No warning, no impact, but the blast injured over 1,500 people and shattered windows for miles. Now, imagine if it had been 200 meters wider, or 2 kilometers. So the question isn't, could it happen again? The question is, when? But don't panic because we're not entirely defenseless. 
Not yet. For the first time in Earth's history, one species might finally be able to fight back. In 2022, NASA launched a mission that sounded like science fiction, but it was very real. Its name? DART, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. Its mission? To slam into a small asteroid moonlet called Dimorphos and change its course. The goal wasn't destruction, it was deflection. And incredibly, it worked. The collision altered Dimorphos' orbit by a measurable amount, proving that a spacecraft traveling fast enough could nudge a threatening asteroid off course before it reaches Earth. It's a huge step, but it's also just a test because Dimorphos was tiny and slow. What happens when the rock is 10 kilometers wide? What if it's traveling 70,000 kilometers per hour like Chicxulub? Some scientists believe we'd need something far more powerful, nuclear weapons, kinetic barrages, or even space-based interceptors. But the truth is, we don't yet have a proven system to stop a planet killer. Not yet. Which means Earth's best defense is early detection and time. And right now, we're in a race against both. 66 million years ago, the dinosaurs ruled the Earth. And in minutes, they were gone. They had no warning, no telescopes, no space programs, just instincts and extinction. But we, we have satellites, supercomputers, space missions. We have the tools, the knowledge, the choice, and yet we still live in a cosmic shooting gallery, a fragile blue dot in an unpredictable universe. What happened once can happen again. The story of the dinosaurs isn't just a warning, it's a mirror, a reminder that our fate depends not just on looking back, but on being ready for what's coming next. Because something is out there. And if you're ready for more mysteries, more mind-bending science, and more truths hidden behind the stars, then the next video waiting for you will leave you speechless. Click it now and keep exploring.